Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we'll be looking at 10 whiskey bottles and I'll be asking the question, how much should you pay for these whiskies? Let's find out, run the video. All right then folks, and welcome back to another new and exciting episode of the Whiskey Cove, where on today's edition, we'll be asking the question how much you should pay for these 10 whiskeys. And in today's market where everything's quite expensive, wouldn't it be a good time to be able to get some free whiskey? Well, good time that is, because we have six free bottles to give away on the Whiskey Cove 5,000 subscriber giveaway. You need to do two things. Firstly, you must be a subscriber, uh, so hit that subscribe button. And then secondly, go over to the Whiskey Cove's website, go over to the Shop All tab, and then submit your free ticket. Fill out the shipping address where you would like that to be sent, and then just pay attention to whenever we start to do the 5,000 live subscriber event. So then we'll be pulling names there, so you can win one of these next five bottles, and then we'll be adding one more when we hit 5,000. So the first is the Willet Four Year Rye, All Forrester Single Barrel Barrel Strength, Weller 107 or OWA, Early Times Bottle and Bond, the Black Brown Form and Discontinued Cap version, and then EH Taylor Small Batch. So if you'd like to win one of these bottles, hit that subscribe button after this video, go over to the Whiskey Cove's website and then sign up for your free entry. Let's get these out of here. And then let's get on with today's video, shall we? So I've selected 10 whiskey bottles today. We have quite a variation, which is what I wanted to do. To give uh, folks who maybe can't find this whiskey, but they can find out and a bit more of an opportunity to kind of hear how much they should be paying for these whiskeys. So that being said, we do have 10, so we'll knock them out here. Uh, and then maybe comment down below how much you would pay for these. Some of them I would pay more, some of them I would pay less. So let's have a look here. So first up, and we're gonna do Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. So I'm going to try to do the MSRPs for Colorado. They might be a little bit higher or uh, they might be a little bit less depending on what part of the country you are at. So Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, not any specific one, uh, just the whole Barrel Proof range in total. So this is the C921. So in Colorado, these range between about $75 and $80 for the most part. And I would probably prefer to play about $70 if I can in all honesty. So why $70 as opposed to maybe like $75 or $80? Well, I just feel like there's such a variation between the batches lately. This new one, the C923, I believe that's what it's called, is supposed to be some of the best juice for like the last two or three years. But before then, for the last two years, the, 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 the juice was just kind of mediocre. It wasn't that good or hasn't been that good at all. So yes, I would pay $70. You can still find them in some places for $70, but for the most part, you're gonna be paying a little bit higher than that. Uh, and also another reason why I wouldn't pay too much is that I like to create, keep bringing out these like private barrels right now. And these cost like upwards of $80. People seem to mark them up a little bit. And I wouldn't pay $80 for these. This is a 10 year, so it's not too bad, but I'm seeing like a lot of eight year bourbons out there. And they're just not as good as the, the standard barrel offering of 12 years, even though they've changed that right now. And the, and the new C batch is like 30 years plus so I prefer, preferably would stay the $70 however if you've never found it uh, and you only have this one opportunity to buy it then maybe $75 $80 might be worth it however $70 for me next up we have old granddad 114 so this is not, not an easy bottle to find in Colorado. This was missing from shelves for like the last 18 months. And I don't know if Jim Bean have kind of upped the amount of distillate because there's such a want for this bottle. But I just couldn't find it, I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it for the longest time. Then I eventually did find it. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like what we say in the UK. It's kind of like a bus. You wait and wait and wait for one to show up. And when it does show up, many show up afterwards. And now I can find this mostly everywhere. So I paid $29.99 for this, which I feel is a little bit on the higher side. Probably $25 is where you want to be sitting with this. However, I think I would pay a little bit more for this whiskey. I think, I'm thinking I would probably pay like $35 for this. I think this is a good ball. It has an excellent amount of ABV and proof. It's a little spicy for my palate, but I really like the nose. You do get a lot of that spice on the nose, but you got like some apples and pears and uh, like vanilla custard as well. It's like an apple pie type vibe. And like I said, I really like the nose. Uh, and I, I have like 
four of these. So I'm pretty set for a while because I was just a little worried just in case they, uh, they run out for, uh, and I wasn't able to find them again. However, $35, so higher price than what the MSRP is for Old Grandad 114. So next up, we have Old Forester 100, 50% ABV or 100 proof. I think I paid right in the region of about $20, $21 for this. I think MSRP is like right at $22, I think. So I think I paid a little bit less. For this bottle, I, I really like the juice that's in here. I like Old Forester. I like their distillate. I like their flavor profile of like waffle and pancakes. A little bit sweeter there as well, a little banana, bready. Uh, and how much would I pay for this? I think I would pay up to $30, $30 to $35. Because as soon as after that, you, you kind of really get in, again into the realm of like 1910 and 1920. So uh, that, that would eat into like how much I would pay for them a little bit. But I think for like $30 to $35. 35 would be my max for this. Uh, that's nearly almost double the MSRP on this. So I guess what I'm saying is excellent value for money. If you can go out and get one of these, you're gonna have good whiskey anytime you drink it. Uh, it's not gonna let you down at all. That is Old Forester 100. Next up, we have 1792 Full Proof. Yes, this is a single barrel one. We're not talking about the single barrel picks, just Full Proof by 1792 in general. So I like a lot of the distillate from 1792. I really like the 12 year that they do. However, this is probably my least favorite. And actually, in fact, in actual fact, we did a blind with all the 1792 core range, and this did come in last, so that would tell you uh, it's not my favorite. So MSRP is about 55 to $60 on this, and I wouldn't pay that much. I actually would prefer all granddad over this, so I wouldn't pay. So if I paid $30 for all granddad, and I would pay up to like 35 for that, I think I wouldn't pay more than $30 for this. I don't like fall proof. I think it's really uh, heavy on the nose. It's really bitter, and it's a lot of that. Yes, it's obviously full proof, so it's more cast strength, but it, it, it kind of smells a little like a, a acetone or uh, rubbing alcohol. It has too much unrounded proof that comes out of this bottle. And I just wish that it was a little bit better, like the 1792 12 year, like the bottle and bond, like those flavors that come out of that juice are very nice. However, for me, I feel like they missed the mark with this full proof. So I'd only pay like $30, which is why I haven't bought any more of these full proofs since I have had my first one. So $30 on this one going down the other way. Next up, we have Early Times Bottled in Bond. This is a one liter bottle. It is 100 proof or 50% ABV. It is bottled in Bond. It is made now by the Sazerac company uh, and then it used to be made by Brown Foreman. How much would I pay for this? So I think I, I pay about 23 to $25 for these. I have bought quite a lot uh, in recent times. And I would pay probably up to $40 for this bottle. Yes, like I said, you get one liter, so you get in 25, close to 25% or exactly 25% more distillate. And it's a really nice taste in whiskey. whiskey. Strawberries, on the, like strawberries and cream on the nose, strawberry pop tart, very berry forward as well. So like more jammy and compote notes come from this. But it also has a nice spice and woody backbone there as well. It really does punch above this weight. So like I said, I would pay a lot more for this bottle than the MSRP. And I think that's a fair reflection on this bottle. And for me personally, I don't think there's much change from when Brown Foreman owned it. I think the distillate's pretty much exactly the same, but that's my own opinion on this. So that was early times bottled in bond. Next up we have Dickel bottled in bonds. This is the 11 year bottled in bond version. Uh, uh, they also have had a 13 year one. I guess, I guess it just depends on the batches, but we'll just take it as the bottled in bond in general. This again, 50% ABV or 100 proof like the early times. So even with the age on this, like 11, and even the 13 year one that I've tried, the age doesn't really come through that much in the whiskey. It, it does drink a little bit spicy, but you do get like that Tennessee whiskey sweetness that does help round that out a little bit. But like I said, I'm a little bit disappointed because you don't get that age, that 11 or 13 year age thing, and you don't feel that when you're drinking in this whiskey. So I kind of disregard that, but you might be able to pick up more of that age than I would. Value for money, uh, I think oh, what I paid for it was about $40, which isn't bad at all for a, uh, an 11 or 13 year old Tennessee whiskey. However, I think it probably is a little bit pricey. Even though I understand that it's got a good age statement, I don't feel that when I'm drinking it. So I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't pay more than $25 for this. 
you're probably better off going with the eight year bourbon that they make. And maybe it's just the fact that this is a Tennessee whiskey compared to the bourbon uh, that, the, that the age doesn't come through because there's a lot more sweetness there, but I wouldn't pay more than that for this bottle. Next up, we have Caribou Crossing made by Sazerac. This is kind of like the Canadian plantains, if you like. Uh, a lot of people hunt for this bottle and it's just not that good at all. 40% ABV or 80 proof. It kind of tastes, it noses like, uh, it genuinely noses a little bit like paint stripper. I don't know what the age is of this juice, but it doesn't smell old or nose old at all. It smells very youthful, very thin, uh, very acetone -y. It's not very nice, and I don't like it whatsoever. MSRP is about $60 on this bottle. People hunt for it quite a lot. Maybe that's just because of the stopper, but uh, I've seen these marked up at stores quite a lot. We did a video up in Wyoming lately and they were selling them for $100. Needless to say, there was a lot still on the shelves there. So at 60 bucks, I definitely wouldn't pay that for it. And honestly, uh, and, I'm, uh, and you might disagree with this, but this kind of tastes more of like bottom shelf whiskey. I wouldn't pay more than $20 for this whiskey. If you're just buying this whiskey, just for the juice that's inside the bottle, don't pay more than $20 for this. Uh, it's just not worth it. Yes, this is a single barrel, so it's potential that I just got a really sucky single barrel. However, from what I understand, what a lot of people discuss is this, this whiskey is just not that good in general. So that was Caribou Crossing and just don't pay more than like 15, 20 dollars for it. Next up, we have Weller Special Reserve, uh, coming in at 45% ABV or 90 proof, and it is the baby of the Weller family. It isn't terrible, and it's not bad in my opinion. I think it's just all right juice. I think because it has the Weller name, when people tend to drink it, they're like, wow, this isn't actually that good compared to what I was hoping it would be, because they've been chasing the Weller name for so long, and then when they finally hit on like a Weller Special Reserve, and they're like, this is just mediocre at best. But that's not this bottle's fault. Coming in at MSRP, about $25. I'd pay $25 for this. I think that's right on the money. Uh, I would probably maybe even go up to 30 as well, uh, but I definitely wouldn't go over $30 for this bottle, and I think the MSRP is probably more closer to $30 these days, so I think that would be an excellent price for this if you could find it. And I've, I, don't, I wouldn't say I buy these quite consistently, but I see them quite consistently for $30. And if I had drunk this, I would definitely pick one up for $30 as a backup. So that was well a special reserve. So then two bottles we have left, and one is the High West Double Rye Picks, specifically the picks. So up until lately, or before lately I should say, these were retailing around about $45 to $50 MSRP, and you can have a, a wide range of different picks. Uh, this one is a McCavin Phoenix Barrels. You can have like maple syrup, you can have Merlot, Zinfandel, old midwinter night dram bottles, vermouth, brandy. They just have like a massive, like over like, it's probably closer to 100 of the different finishes that they've had. I don't know the exact number. I have about 20 to 25 myself. I would have definitely agreed to pay that $50 for what it was originally, but now in the last year, uh, the, the MSRP has definitely kicked up a little bit, and now I'm seeing them no less than $65 at stores, even sometimes $70, $73. And I wouldn't pay $70 for them. I think my max I would pay is $55, unless there's a pick that I really want. There was a really poor pick out in Chicago recently at Binnie's. I think it was Binnie's and I paid $70 for that, but that's only because I had been looking for a ruby port pick for so, so long. However, I generally wouldn't pay more than $50 to $5 for these picks. I think the, the, it, they're all pretty good, uh, pretty well tasting, but I think the level, the, the rye they print, which is the double rye, uh, is just not worth $60 plus for it. So try to stick up $55 for these finishing picks. And then lastly, we have Eagle Rare Tenure. So you can get these in the single barrel picks and if you can pay any less than $40 for those picks, definitely pick them up. I don't know why, but there's a lot of craze with those picks and they seem to sell uh, for a lot more when people go out and trade them somewhere. However, the MSRP on these guys are about $35 to $40. I feel like they're more, it's more $40 here in Colorado and I've seen them quite a lot and I will not pay more than $40 for this bottle because at that point then, uh, you may as well go and buy uh, Russell's Reserve 10 for like 12 uh, for like 12 or 13 dollars less i think i paid like 
$30 for my Russell's Reserve 10. Yes, it is a different flavor profile than this bottle. And I think because it's Buffalo Trace and it's a 10 year, people might pay a little bit more. I've seen these in stores for all sorts of crazy prices, up to like 100 bucks in some stores. However, I wouldn't pay more than $40 and I don't pay more than $40 for this bottle. But again, like we said in the beginning, if you haven't been able to find one of these ever and you really wanted a bottle, then I won't begrudge then someone paying $50 because I pretty much understand that. And you're still getting a pretty good distillate as well and a good whiskey and a very recognizable whiskey there as well. But for me, I wouldn't pay more than $40. So that was the last bottle that we were all talking about today. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let, again, let me know how much you would pay for these whiskeys because it is definitely a very interesting topic as the MSRP on whiskeys continue to rise and uh, people's pay kind of stagnate a little bit, creates a little bit of an impact. Balance. With that being said, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do and make sure you sign up then for that free subscriber giveaway as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers.